No matter what level of play you're at, you're always going to face the London system. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you a very easy setup, very quick to learn, and it's good to go right up to 2000 level. So let's look at how White's going to set up then. So what White intends to do is stick the bishop on the f4 square outside the pawn chain, where we've got pawns on e3, d4 and c3. This bishop's likely come to go to d3, going to castle king's side, and then this knight's going to come to d2. And they're going to play that no matter what. They want to just play that, bang that out, and just get a middle game where they uh, play it on the king's side. But the black setup I'm going to recommend is just going to disrupt that setup uh, immediately, almost from the outset. It's very, very simple, it's flexible, and it's aggressive. So this is the setup I recommend as black against the London system. What uh, you're going to do, if you play d5 to d4, you can play d5 first, right? If you play knight f6 to d4, you can play knight f6 first. So that's why it's perfectly flexible, because obviously from the outset, you don't know that they're going to go into a London once they play d4. So you can either start with d4, but you're going to play d4 and knight f6 together, c5, Knight's going to come to c6 and you're going to play this move last of all, queen b6, where you're going to aim at this often weak b2 pawn and cause wide a lot of problems, which is what we want. So let's look at the moves in context. Let's look at how it works in context then. So after d4, you can play d5 or knight f6. Totally up to you, depending on your own opening systems. Uh, but white is going to play into the London system and the move orders don't matter that much for white. They're still gonna they get into the London system through different move orders. It doesn't really matter. So knight f6, bishop f4. I recommend c5 immediately. E3. Knight c6, c3, and then queen b6. And this was the setup that I've just previously shown. This is the basic starting point for the game against the London system. So I will look at that continuation. And this is like the main line, the main critical play against the London system actually. So it's the best line for it as well. But what happens if white takes on c5, like in this position? Instead of e3, what happens if white takes on c5? This is not something you're gonna face that often. All right, the Leishes database says this is about four or five percent. So, you know, you're going to see that mainline position more often than not. But in this case, this is not a good move because we're just going to play e6. And white, singling that they take, took the pawn in the first place, is going to hang on to try and hang on to the pawn. Now, this is very anti London uh, for, from white's point of view. So it's something they're probably not going to do, as seen from the percentages. But in this case, what we're going to do is try and undermine this pawn at every single move. So, a5, c3 takes takes for example knight c6 you know hitting the, the b4 pawn and if we try and protect it we're just going to undermine it like that and we play on the queen side and black's just got a better game so going back to the main line setup with queen b6 if uh, queen b3 here is the most common move 48 percent of, of cases so i'm going to be looking at this move white can also just play queen c2 in which case then you know you have got a choice of actually this very nice move bishop f5 right because we can't take this because then bang we're on the rook right so this would be a mistake for white so black gets a free tempo on the queen and this is looking a little bit silly for, for white now with uh, this setup right we've got tension in the position and we're going to play e6 like bishop somewhere, bishop e7, castles, and we bring the rooks over and play on the queen side. And black's just got a better position in that in that sort of instance. So more often than not, white will play queen b3, and then we play c4, hitting the queen. Now I've had this position, I don't know how many times, countless amount of times uh, in uh, in my games online and at the club and things like that, and in tournaments. And generally, I've sort of facing a 50-50 split between either white retreating to c2 uh, or taking the queen. Both moves are still absolutely fine for black and I like both positions equally. So let's look, and the stats actually 55% queen exchange and 45% uh, queen c2. So if queen c2, then we have the usual bishop f5 move, 
right? And uh, White at the end is a sim similar position where White is just looking a little bit silly. The Queen's been battered around and Black's just got three temples for development. So that's a little bit sad for White. Obviously, like again, like I just said, we can't take in that position because of this. Be careful though, because this Bishop F5 trick will not work if White had previously played this knight to D2. So what you do get sometimes is if White sort of you know, experienced against this sort of position and against this sort of tactic uh, trap, if you like, then the knight will come to d2. And in that case, we can't play bishop f5 because after ticks, then if we take, the queen can come straight back to b1 and we just a piece down. Or well, the queen can take this pawn. It's not with checks, the knight's on this square. So we will lose the bishop for two pawns and that's not enough compensation. So the only thing to so you need to consider, is there a knight on this square? Is there a knight on d2 in, from this position? No, so we're all right to play bishop f5. If this knight was on d2, you can't play bishop f5, right? You can just carry on with your normal setup. You know, it's it's totally up to you here. You could play the bishop to g4, or if you, if you wanted to, you could still play e6, uh, bishop somewhere, castle, and keep the bishop this side, and then play for uh, sort of queenside attack attention on the queen side and a breakthrough on b2 that's that's the general plan that i always played I and mean, which seemed to work pretty well most of the time so yeah so in the position if uh, let's go back to the position with uh, exchange of queens so if the queens are exchanged let's go back to, to this bit because it looks a bit weird after c4 if the queens come off the board let's put that on the board then we just take Right, and we've got the similar setup just without queens. Right, so uh, let's say continuing development. You can play for b5, b4, e6, bishop, uh, well, it's e7 unless we take, and then we can play the bishop here. Castle king side, and we're going to do a queen side attack. The same sort of system. The same pressure on the queen side, just without the queens. And this works fine. The percentage stats for black wins in this position are 58%, 53%. Like, it, black's just in a better position in all cases, in all setups. Uh, so, yeah, so that's what I would definitely recommend against the London. Doesn't take much to learn. It's simple to play. Same plans in all of those particular situations. Obviously, this is just a quick overview, but honestly, that's what I learned to play against the London system and it's done me for, for years, right? <laughs> done me all right for years and I've played you. So I've beaten 1900 level players over the board with it, with just that level of knowledge of the opening. So obviously I have uh, put up a study as well in, in Lee Chess, so you can go and have a look at it. And obviously you can play around in a bit more detail, looking at some of the other moves, but that setup is gonna be good enough in the vast majority of cases against the vast majority of opponents. So thank you, take care.